Okay, so welcome to this um, discussion. Um, Ian and Tom, we'll come to introduce introductions in a minute, have asked me to facilitate this conversation um, into leadership. We know that creativity and self-awareness, psychology, are key foundations for us to thrive in this volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world. So where does that lead, leave leadership in this post-pandemic situation? This conversation is about the mind, creativity and change and exploring what business leaders need to know about the secret life of emotions. Discussing us today, we have Ian Bates and Dr. Tom Cotton. Ian, would you like to just introduce yourself? Hi, uh, Ian Bates. I'm the founder and creative partner at Firehouse. Um, we're a brand consultancy working specifically to turn scale-ups into brands. Thank you. And Tom? Hi there, so I'm Tom Cotton. Um, I am founder and program director of Mind Environment, uh, which is a leadership uh, consultancy, and uh, I work as a psychologist, and that has a, a clinical and an organisational uh, application. Amazing. Two brilliant minds coming together to talk about creativity and change. <laughs> So what's the issue that leaders are facing at the moment? What's the main main challenge? Well, clearly one of the uh, challenges has been with us for a while, pre-pandemic as well as post. Um, and that is the pace of change within uh, every industry sector. Um, Digital transformation clearly being one of the things underpinning that, but I'm sure that there are greater or as great forces uh, pulling on that as, as well. Um, and I think one of them increasingly being um, people's desire to find fulfilment in their work and not now accept perhaps what they were accepting pre-pandemic, uh, which was a bit of a hamster wheel. Mm. And Tom, when you, as, as with your background, as a, as a psychologist and now leadership um, consultant and pulling those two things together, in response to what Ian's sort of describing there, where does the mind talk about the, the emotions that leaders need to be aware of? Where does that play in? So I suppose my preoccupation is um, if you're running an organisation, if you're leading an organisation and you're dealing with uh, a network of minds um, as well as your own mind as a leader, uh, because after all, organisations are staffed by people. Um, and I suppose the what, what sort of connects the work that I do clinically and the work that I do with leaders and organisations is um, how can you help people to work more productively uh, with what's there and the forces that are at play? Um, and I suppose my background being a psychoanalytic and existential background, one of the things I'm really interested in is how, as both individuals and as groups of people, in interaction with both ourselves and others, if that's not too complicated, what's very difficult to think about is um, the forces that are at play that don't normally enter into normal discussion. Mm -hmm. And so as people, um, organizations uh, touch on some of the deepest, most powerful emotional material, um, but we are not very good at talking about what's going on. And that matters because if you believe, as I do, um, that a lot of the most powerful choices uh, that individuals and organizations make are set at that level, then to not be able to connect with that and work with it productively um, can, on the one hand, it can produce all sorts of problems that we don't know how to deal with effectively. 
Um, and on the other hand, it can be an obstacle to growth and creativity. So it really matters. Um, and so my interest is how can how can one help individuals, teams, organizations to have more productive conversations internally, so to be aware of everything that's in play, um, and in an interaction with others. And um, it, it's a simple question, but it's also uh, the answers, I think, are much more complex than the question belies. Well, I think what's interesting about that, Tom, is, uh, is that... Um, at both an organisational and a personal level, that interaction, that kind of intersection, uh, impacts on creativity. Um, because uh, an organisation can foster the, the conditions for creativity, but they also need to be practised by individuals uh, and teams of teams of people. And we can perhaps discuss some of those uh, later. Um, so yes, I think it's uh, it's interesting that um, potentially those conversations, those discussions, uh, or acknowledgement of the forces at work that you've referenced, uh, the fact that they haven't been to date discussed within businesses, perhaps now as people are seeking greater fulfilment, I certainly perceive. Um, in work, they're looking for a greater purpose in their work. Mm. They're looking to perhaps to be part of businesses who are able to articulate their purpose um, more clearly, whether that is a, a, a social or environmental purpose. Clearly, that's incredibly important right now. But at least having clarity about what the business is there to do beyond purely... Uh, making a profit uh, so that, that that's interesting some of these pressures you see are, are coming now from interesting quarters we you know we see that you know uh, major investment uh, companies are are looking for businesses to have that whole uh, ESG uh, component um, clearly articulated within businesses um, before they invest uh, you know, from the likes of BlackRock down. Um, so clearly, this is something that's that's now been recognised um, at that super corporate level, as well as from that individual sense of belonging, a sense of purpose, and uh, and I don't know how you feel about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but that sense of personal kind of self actualization in your work? Yeah, I think they're all excellent points and I'm thinking how connected things like um, purpose, creativity, openness, authenticity and well-being are in organisational life and how, I mean, ultimately that has an impact on how sustainable a business is. Mm -hmm. And long-term sustainability um, has an impact on the bottom line. Given that it's now, I think, accepted that it's it's a pretty powerful metric um, in terms of uh, judging whether a business is a is a good long-term investment. So the health of the organisation, beyond just bottom line itself, hugely important. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you know the the implications are obvious um, if. If you're operating in an organization in which you're not able to engage in an open conversation about all of the obvious forces that are at play, then there's a degree of self-deception and delusion, self-delusion about what is at play. And then what you need to do in order to maintain that uh, self-deception becomes ever more costly. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm thinking about a conversation that I had um, this morning with a, a client who's a, a pretty large business um, that's been acquired by a private equity business. And their main focus, the new owners, is on fattening the business up for sale in a year or two. Um, and what they're really focused on is the, the bottom line um, and squeezing as much of the other areas of the business 
as possible so it can increase the bottom line to make it more attractive um, when they float the business. Um, but the problem is it won't be sustainable in the longer term. Mm -hmm. It's not sustainable now. Mm -hmm. So it, it has a massive impact on uh, uh, well-being um, and the uh, senior people in the organization um, at every level in the organization questioning, questioning, you know, what is the purpose of this business? Because mm -hmm. it's not really working for me at the moment. No, no. And then, then it becomes very difficult to be a leader. 